This is a 3D low poly generator that runs completely in your browser. It's easy to use, free, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how it works. It's no secret that I like low poly models. I've been making tutorials on how to create low poly models from 3D models for a couple years now, and I think they have a very unique look to them, and they tend to be pretty well suited for 3D printing. In fact, when you only make part of a model low poly, it gives it a very interesting look. Programs like Mesh Mixer and Blender are great ways to create low poly 3D models from existing CAD. And the cool thing about low poly models is you can run into them anywhere. I saw this one on a trip to Boston, and I thought it was one of the coolest things I'd ever seen. I had to pull over and get a picture of it. I mean, come on, look at that smile. I'm so excited. Unfortunately, the learning curve to use some of these softwares can be a little steep, and I wanted to make a tool that was easier to use. So I created this. I call it the 3D Low Poly Generator, and it runs completely in browser with no software or downloads needed. You can insert a 3D model, decimate it, reduce the overall face count, and export either an STL or an OBJ file, or just bring the model back to its original shape if you're not satisfied with the decimation result. It's not as powerful as programs like Blender and Mesh Mixer, and it's not really meant as a replacement for them, it's just meant to be a very fast and easy way to create a low poly 3D model. The 3D low poly generator is completely open source, so the source code is available on GitHub. This tool was made using 3JS. I'm not a JavaScript developer, so this project was really just an exercise in me getting comfortable with the 3JS library. Because this is an open source project, you are welcome and encouraged to submit any issues or potential areas for improvement that you might see. For instance, here you're looking at an update from GitHub user Minso that allows the program to run iteratively, so it's only doing the decimation a few steps at a time, which allows you to do large models without crashing your browser. With all that in mind, let's go ahead and fire up the low poly generator and take a look at the controls. Because the 3D low poly generator is browser based, all you have to do is fire up your browser and type in lowpoly3d.xyz. You can find a link to the site in the description below. So let's take a look at the controls at the bottom left of the screen first. These are the feedback controls and we're going to go over from top to bottom exactly what they do. At the top we have our current triangle count. This is how many triangles are in the model right now. The second is the target triangle count. This is how many triangles will be in the model after we've decimated it. Next we have estimated processing time and progress. On a larger mesh, the estimated processing time will be longer, it takes more time to remove more triangles, and the progress bar will move slower. Finally, we have a link to the full code on GitHub, as well as a link to Coffee. We'll talk about that at the end of the video, but it's kind of like a Patreon, except it's a one-time donation. Now we're going to take a look at the controls at the top right of the screen. These are the controls that allow us to rotate the model, as well as apply a set amount of decimation, and export the finished product. Rotate X, Y, and Z will all rotate the model in 90 degree increments, which is useful if you bring a model in and it imports sideways. The decimation percentage refers to the number of triangles removed, so a 0.25 decimation will result in 25% of the triangles being removed from the model. Clicking reset will bring the model back to its original triangle count. The full code is available on GitHub if you're interested in what's going on behind the scenes, but the majority of the action takes place in this chunk right here, and what we're doing is we're getting the number of faces in our mesh, then we're calculating whatever the decimation amount is and reducing it by that amount. Let's take a look at a real-world example. This MechWarrior model is perfect because it has lots of fine features and intricate details that all need to resolve individually instead of being a monolithic shape. As I move the decimation percentage back and forth, we can see the estimated processing time change as well as the target triangle count. When you're first using this tool, it's best to start with small decimation amounts, so 5-10%, and update incrementally. Running a large decimation on a complicated model takes a long time to process, so typically it makes more sense to run multiple small iterations instead. To give you an idea of how long this takes, the video that you're watching right now is being run in the browser. It hasn't been sped up at all, so this is being played back at real time. And you can see these smaller decimations happen very quickly. Now that the triangle count has been reduced from 21,000 down to 5,000, we can start running larger percentages without a loss in performance. This means our processing time is only a few seconds to reduce 30, 40, 50%, and we get a really interesting looking model. Even though this model only has a few hundred triangles, it still retained the majority of its overall shape from the beginning when it had 21,000. It's still recognizable for what it's supposed to be. 
So at this point, you can either export the model or we can reset it. So here we can just click export and that'll automatically save the STL and clicking the reset button will bring it back to its original shape. And that's it. Now you've made a 3D low poly masterpiece of your own. There really aren't a whole lot of limits as to what you can do with this tool, so I encourage you to experiment with it and see what kind of models you can make. I've had a few people ask me recently if I had a Patreon account, and the answer is no. My projects tend to be spaced out and sporadic, so I don't want anybody tied to a monthly recurring charge. Instead, I've recently set up a coffee, which lets you make a one-time donation whenever you get use out of one of my projects. You can check out the link in the description. As always, thanks for watching, and have fun printing.